All right, hi, my name is Jennifer McMillan and I'm the composer of Listening for What Comes Next. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty active in the Edmonton music community. I play a lot at the Mayfield Dinner Theater. Um, I'm actually doing a show there right now. Uh, and uh, for the Citadel Theatre, and uh, I play a lot for choirs around town and write a lot for them. Mostly arrangements. Um, I've actually been doing a lot of arranging for choirs sort of across Canada, especially now with the pandemic along. Uh, yes, I've, I've composed a couple pieces for Kokopelli Youth Choir, and yeah, I still feel actually quite new as a composer. I haven't done too much original works, but I do a lot of arranging, like taking other people's uh, like pop songs or jazz, anything, and then working it for choral arrangements. Tim had contacted me and was just telling me about this idea for the Edmonton Opera. It, was, it just was very exciting and uh, I was a little nervous about it because I felt like it would be a big challenge. I've never worked um, with anything opera before, so I, I think I'm more maybe pop-based, contemporary-based. So I, uh, I thought it would be a good challenge, but um, I was a little nervous, but I'm so happy with how it turned out. And it, it sounded like it was gonna be a really interesting project. So for musical influences, I would say in the choral world, Eric Whitaker is by far my favorite. Um, I really like his music. Um, he uses lots of really tight harmonies, which I, I really enjoy. And then I also like um, Lin-Manuel Miranda, Hans Zimmer, and in the more pop world, I'd say Sarah Bareilles is by far my favorite songwriter. So the story of how this was composed. Um, well, I asked Lisa if she would be willing to provide me lyrics first because I've, um, I always get inspired by the lyrics. Uh, so I have a hard time writing music first. And so she blew me away and sent me seven pages of incredible text and uh, I got that just before I was heading off for a family trip to the mountains for a week so I lived with those lyrics for a week just trying to figure out different melody ideas and what I was going to do with that and when I got home I yeah started putting pen to paper and it was it was an interesting process because I, I felt a little bit of pressure just writing for Edmonton Opera, like I, I really wanted to do an amazing job for them. <laughs> and um, yeah, it just, it, it took a while to become inspired, but once I just came up with that little melody idea of everyone is listening for what comes next, that just sort of kept rolling around in my head and, and you'll hear that over and over and over throughout this piece. That's sort of the main chorus, but then it, it keeps coming back at the end. Um, and yeah, from there, I guess it just finally started flowing. <laughs> so I just start off with like a simple piano thing, just, and Lisa had this awesome phrase, just time, now, gone. And so that's, that's what the, the choir starts off with just and yeah this can just sort of be like a clock ticking or something just the time passing nice and slow i was listening a lot to the hamilton soundtrack throughout the summer so i kind of feel like after uh i finished writing this and then reflecting back on it i'm like maybe there's a little bit of hamilton inspiration especially in the um in the bridge part uh, where I have this little figure between uh, the women's voice parts. It appears, it appears, it appears. That sort of little Hamilton influence and um, uh, just the like little fast lines, I guess. Like, uh, just, just a little bit of groove in there. I think that was my Lin Manuel Miranda <laughs> moment. <laughs> After the sort of big climax almost of the bridge where it does get a little bit more rhythmic it all comes back down to this slow figure and at this point i just wanted it to be like people sort of reflecting i guess of this crazy 
shut down, the world shut down experience. And so here it just is becoming more personal again. And then there, it's just a steady crescendo to the end. The parts keep growing bigger and bigger. There, there's more parts. It starts off with just a solo soprano, well, the soprano twos, um, just singing their line. And then, yeah, more parts keep getting added. Uh, and yeah, and then finally finishing. We're all listening for what comes next. So working with Lisa was absolutely incredible. She's such a talented writer. Um, and it was a very interesting experience working with a poet as opposed to a lyricist, because I've only worked with songwriters before. And um, yeah, so getting her text, it was interesting seeing um, her use of meter, uh, because I, yeah, I'm only, like working with songwriters, it's always been like very structured, I guess, and like this is a verse, this is a chorus, whereas her her text is just whatever's flowing out of her, I guess. So it took me a little while to wrap my head around how to use her lyrics properly and, and still make it come off in a nice song form, <laughs> I guess, but yeah, it was a fantastic challenge and like I would gladly work with her again. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and I really hope you enjoy listening to Listening for What Comes Next.